Hey guys, my name is Alex. I have been building trucks, cars, ambulances, vans, all into adventure rigs to support my traveling lifestyle for a really long time. I've made every mistake I feel like there is to make out there and I'm gonna show you guys the right way that I do things so that it lasts a long time, you don't wind up overspending, and you get the rig that you really want and need when it's all said and done. Most of this was shot six months ago. The van is now almost done. This video series will start modern day, go back in time to when I first got it and was doing the build out, and then come back to modern day to show you the finished product, let you know my final thoughts, what I learned along the way, and give you any pro tips I have at the end. If you enjoy this, please do all the usual YouTube metric stuff, but mostly I'll be putting Amazon links throughout this series in the bottom. Please, whether or not you're buying something that I'm recommending in these videos, just use the portal, do your normal shopping, and 3% of whatever you get will wind up coming my way. That goes a long way towards helping me just keep doing this stuff. The floor. Man, if this isn't, I think, one of the worst understood, most overthought through, worst executed places in a van. Ever since sprinters became hot, people want to take house grade building solutions and bring them into a van. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Truthfully, I almost bought into this for a hot second. I completely changed tax by the end of it, and I am going to cover that in depth in this video. So I will show you the best, cheapest, quickest way to get a finished insulated floor in terms of a DIY solution. Ultimately though, I'm gonna step back and show you what I eventually did. It wound up costing a little bit more, mostly because I was able to scrounge most of the materials from my original solution, but I am so much happier with the finished result of what I wound up doing just by swiping my credit card. The shop is totally destroyed, but the good part is there's a good reason for it. I'm gonna break in the new van. This has been a long time coming. It's a four x four transit. I'm told it used to be used to move around juvenile uh, detention passengers, probably court around campus, whatever. Got a police can only can order it divider back here with plexi and everything. The holes are right there where the shotgun used to be bolted. Sadly, the old girl is all cleaned out and she's for sale. Man, this thing is comically overbuilt. This is so sketchy. Oh, 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 oh my God, that's heavy. They did not want any surprise visitors. You're probably wondering what all this is, right? Well, look like at a curve. There's a wheel well. Yeah, this is the floor. So in the passenger versions of the transit, what they do is they have these air plenums that run back from the passenger front seat. And what they do is they correlate to these vents right here. So basically, this is just way too thick, especially when it's not really doing any insulation. It's mostly just making an air gap for the air plenum, but it's also making a gap to deal with the height here for all these seat clips. So we are going to find the right Torx head, rip all of these things out, figure out what in the world that is standing up back there, and get all of this to level, rip all the foam and stuff off, we'll sell that, and drop this floor by about an inch. What in the world? Huh. Okay, something that was bolted in here and then cut off. Oh, and you got a twin. That's cute. Took forever, but we are finally done. Oh, <laughs> got to be joking. It's a new day. We're gonna put insulation underneath the old floor and a new floor over the old floor. So first thing to do is trace this out and then we're going to pop it in. It's super easy. Ah. 
absolutely astounding just how much dirt. I mean, this is actual potting soil that made it down here. There was a mouse nest in the corner, lovely. And just in general, needs a bunch of cleanup. Somebody drilled holes clean through the bottom of the van here for reasons I have no idea. So I need to plug those again, kill mat and something from the bottom. That'll be done. Here, you can notice there are a ton of holes left over from the uh, seat tracks that used to be here. So the good news with all these guys is that they're threaded. So quick run for grade eight hardware. Don't cheap out, it'll just rust out faster. So, and we'll plug all these. I wish I could screw them all in from the bottom, but these ones you can't reach. It's only like those couple that you can get to from the bottom. So I'm gonna go for the flattest head I can go for and just fill everything in before I put the floor down. We haven't addressed yet the bolt holes from all of the seat mounts. So these are M12 by one and three quarter thread. And I am just going to dip them into this bar and chain oil to fill the voids inside the threads once it's tightened, hopefully prevent future rust. I'm gonna have the thing undercoated anyway. This is mostly superstition, but best practice, maybe. Once that's all sealed up, we are going to be able to drop everything in and wrap this up. Shimming in here. And yeah. I just can't stop thinking that my cabinets I already know are gonna come out to this ridge right here. This bolt right here, you know, it's not far out from where I'm thinking my corner is gonna be. And you don't get a more solid anchor point than that so i am just i'm wrestling with yanking it out and actually screwing it in from the bottom uh and then if i decide that that's how i want to secure my cabinetry at least on this front end then i'd be able to unscrew from the bottom drill a pilot hole up drill down to it through the floor layers and presto rather than having to pull the whole floor back out, go through the whole motion from the wrong side. So, ah, uh, food for thought. Food for thought if you're behind me doing this. Change of plans again. So the one I was looking at, I backed out and looked up. It is up that hole right there, directly above there. But we go back and the pair just behind it are here and here. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of extensions, send that one in, and this will prevent a lot of head scratching and worrying down the road, give me a much nicer connection when I'm ready to put cabinets in. So I'm gonna do one here, do one on the other side, and yeah, there you go. Once again, there is a bolt that is perfectly where I want it to mount a cabinet. I know that my eh, six foot-ish bed bench thing is going to end right at that rib and right at that rib. So we're only off by an inch in each direction. That means I can make corner plates come up like that. So we'll pull this out, mount it from the bottom like the other one if it's free. Super cool. Neighbors finally woke up. Ah, so much better. Unfortunately, I literally live in something called the Salt City, so what can you do, right? Fill these bad boys with red RTV. Not exactly the right thing, but whatever. From there, a little patch over the top with this, making sure to push it in on all sides. Should be good. Exciting corner to have turned. We're actually putting things back so trying to do things in one shot going all the way back and all the way forward what that means is that in order i can put 
the wheel well covers and the floor in, but I am stuck before I can go the rest of the way. Still, progress is progress. So that trimmed out really nicely. It'll come together the rest of the way beautifully. Hannah is working on some uh, CAD work, also known as cardboard aided design. We're going to go ahead and template out insert pieces to fill the hole in the original floor so that when you're walking across the final carpet, you won't feel your toes dip in. Not bad for never running a saw before in your life. The floor is finally back in one piece and ready for carpeting. This is just two layers of quarter inch ply and it is dead flush with the laminate underneath and the black rubber top. So from here, we're just going to cover it up and you'll never know that that's there. So this is about as far as we got with my original plan. This flooring system is perfectly fine. It hits the R value that you need. It doesn't put holes in the floor, but it did have limitations. One of the things I've seen a lot of sprinters guys do is they put fairing strips in a grid pattern on the floor and then put this insulation in between. So first of all, you have thermal bridging with that. So it doesn't actually do the insulation it's supposed to do. But the point is, is to prevent the rigid insulation from crushing uh, and becoming thinner over time. <sighs> You're going to have a little bit of that either way. I would rather just let it crush and then see where the floor levels out to. In any case, this is as far as we went with plan A. In any case, here was the last step for that process. I went dumpster diving behind a office building that was being gutted and got these two by two commercial grade tiles. The rubber on the back so you don't have to worry about water buildup and you know, colors are hit or miss, but whatever, freeze free. That would have worked fine. I would have just used the original inlay again as my template, cut everything out, glued it down, called it a day. You have a nice three layer system and um, you know, with a, a short nap carpet, it's very, very easy to clean. Around this time, the girlfriend gave a big thumbs down to the carpet color. I don't blame her. And I stumbled across the fact that there is a company that actually is making pseudo stock complete flooring solutions. So for a quick credit card swipe for like 200 something bucks, I was able to have a one shot flooring solution made out of the exact same material that you see in a lot of Chevy and GMC trucks. I used to drive a Silverado for work and I loved that stuff. So let me show you what it is and um, just do this for your floor. It, it, it's incredibly sound deadening over what I had put in, which had no sound deadening effect whatsoever. And uh, the longer I've had it, the more I've loved it. So this is what I'm talking about. On the top, it's a completely stock looking finish. It matches perfectly what's up front. And on the bottom, it is a foam. It's all pre-cut to perfectly match all of the existing grooves in the floor. It does a pretty good job on the edges. You just have to get the right stock trim to go back in. So in my case, because I had originally a floor that was that much higher, all the trim pieces that it came with this are junk and just throw them away. I, when I figure out what the right part numbers are, we'll put them in the description. If you have them for the stock height, I would love them. Please put them in the comments. I ordered the wrong thing once already and just got to throw that money away. I cannot stress enough how much I like this system. It's continuous. There's nowhere for water to go. It does an incredible job of sound deadening. Insulation wise, it's also performing very well. Very glad I did this. Hopefully you learned something in both cases and I'll see you on the next one.